Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna animate on this script font logo here. And in this case, we're gonna animate this logo on using a write-on technique. Now, this has probably happened to you. We have a lot of variable stroke widths. We have a lot of overlapping parts. It is a mess. Script fonts are a mess. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques to kind of make sense of this and hopefully make the process a lot more manageable. And speaking of making things more manageable, the logo we're gonna be animating is for a company called Whipster. Whipster make a terrific app for reviewing video with clients and teams. I use it in pretty much all of my client projects where I need them to review or make notes or give feedback. Whipster lets you upload video and clients can just comment right on the frame to highlight specific parts or times that they're interested in. It really makes the communication a lot smoother. If you wanna give Whipster a try, use the link in the description and start adding Whipster to your workflow. Now let's open up After Effects and uh, try to get this logo animated. That's a pretty natural segue, right? So we're here in After Effects. Let's look at a couple of techniques that can help you with complex script-based fonts and logos. It doesn't have to be words. Anytime you're emulating kind of a pen moving, scripty kind of thing, you're gonna run into these kinds of troubles when you try to write them on. Now, what, what troubles am I talking about? Well, if you're familiar with write-on techniques, all of this next few minutes is gonna seem pretty normal. We've got our layer that is our complex, beautiful object. So we would probably draw a path over top of it like this. We just wanna cover up the path. That's really all we're doing in the sort of basic method. You know, and everyone tells me that I'm very basic, so this is a good fit. Now, I'm sure you noticed I'm going to be accelerating some of these steps because you don't need to watch me draw a path to understand drawing a path. Basically, though, you want to make sure that your path is as in the center as you can. So you might need to tweak your path just a little bit to get it where you want it. Now, the next move is pretty simple. We're just going to go to the shape layer, twirl into it. We're going to add a trim paths here. Trim paths allows us to animate paths on and off. We're going to set a keyframe here at the start where the end at 0%. And then we're just going to move ahead a little bit, add a little bit more of it in, move ahead a little bit more, drag this along to maybe there, and then finally move ahead and finish the whole thing off. We're going to grab the keyframes in the middle and ease them. And this is going to be the motion that we want this thing to animate on. Now all we have to do is thicken this up so it covers everything. And oh boy, do we have to thicken that up. And then we would probably go into the stroke and we change it from butt cap to round cap and into round joints. And then the next step is just changing the track mat option of the layer below to be track mat alpha mat. So the layer below is looking at the layer above and you get this kind of thing happening. What's the problem with that? Well, right off the jump, you have this kind of thing happening where it's revealing too much. It's revealing disconnected parts of this logo. Obviously you can go in here and you can just grab the path and try to shift its points around to try to make little errors like that go away. But there are gonna be parts that happen like here, like this middle part here, and this is a pretty simple letter, where this is totally unacceptable, where this kind of overlap is not what we want at all. It wouldn't make sense that a pen would write this on. Well, since this traditional method has failed us, we might as well quit. But nope, there's a lot more of this tutorial, so I'm gonna show you how to fix this kind of thing. We're gonna use a few masks to clean up this mat. So this layer on top is a mat layer. We're using it to define the visual area of what's below it. Now we can use masks on that layer to add and subtract from it. So I just click up here, tool creates mask. And now when I draw on this shape layer, I'm gonna be drawing a mask. And the mask I'm gonna draw is gonna be cutting through this part right here. I wanna to try to match the curve as close as I can. It doesn't need to be perfect so that I isolate just that area. I'm gonna hit M to call up the mask and we're gonna change it to subtract. So as you can see, now I've successfully cut that part away. So even though this is animating up, whoosh, I don't have to worry about it too much because uh, you know, there it goes. And I don't need this to hang out all the time. It's not super necessary that this path always be there. In fact, eventually, this is gonna come out the other side, bloop, right there, and then I no longer need this mask to be hanging out. So I'll just set a keyframe there, pinch this one up, so that on this frame, the mask is in place, and on this frame, I'm just gonna drag it away because we don't need it to be cutting holes and making things complicated, it's, it's a bother. Now we need to clean up the other side of this. So as this is coming up, it shouldn't splay out in this way. We need to add a second mask, to make that go away. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the old pen tool, make sure I'm creating masks on this layer. 
I'm holding down space bar so I can move the points. So I'm alternating between waggling my handles and moving my points. And then we can go change this to subtract. And we've got this cut happening. And again, this doesn't need to hang out forever. I'm going to change it to none. And I'm going to scrub through to see when, when is that no longer going to be useful? Well, I guess it's going to need to hang around for a little while. So I'm going to set a keyframe here, keyframe here, where the path is going to be gone. Set it to subtract, and then it goes away. All right, so this is going to come up. And now we just need to shore up this little point through here. What is going on during that period? And we do that by using yet another mask. So at this point, everything's cool. And then at this point, we're going to start to have some more mask action. So I just go up here. I'm going to use the ellipse tool. And again, making sure I am creating masks. And I'm just going to draw out a circle, I'm trying to make a circle that's roughly the same size as the stroke size, right? So I can go in here, maybe put this like here. I'm going to go in, keyframe its path. And we're going to just move ahead a little bit. And we're going to try to make this follow that edge. You can tell this is the edge of that mask as it's coming down. So we're going to try to make it follow. And you can see I'm moving ahead a few frames at a time because I don't want to necessarily put keyframes on all of them and try to make this thing follow as close as I can to that edge. And you'll notice I still need to fill in some of that part. So I'm going to make sure I'm dragging up this point here to cover it. So it's going from a circle to kind of a weird bean shape. And you may just have to scrub through and make sure, for example, this is a is an ugly thing. That's not a good look. So again, you got to touch that up. All right. So once you're done all of your mask fiddling, you should end up with something nice and smooth like this. And you haven't really created that many keyframes. I know it seems like a bunch of keyframes, but sometimes there's no avoiding work. And it can really help you get that manual control over these tough knots that you really want. However, there is another way I want to show you that relies on you opening up Illustrator. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Please stay with me. We are going to open up Illustrator. What I want to do is break this complicated logo up into many simple little parts that I can understand and animate a lot easier without them interacting with each other. How do I do that? Well, like I said, we are going to open up Illustrator. And usually when you get these kinds of logos, they are all all one thing. If you start by using text and breaking it into shapes, this will be a little bit easier. But sometimes artwork comes at you like this. And what I have to do is convert it into many more shapes. So for example, I've got the first part of the W, the second part of the W, this I part, the first part of the P, the second part of the P, and I carve this all up in Illustrator. I take this big thing, I take the whole thing, I like to duplicate that layer so I can preserve the original. Then I'm going to go in here with the path tool. You hit P to call up your path tool. That makes sense in Illustrator. Doesn't make a lot of sense in After Effects. And we're just going to draw some nice bright lines out here. And I'm going to draw some lines. So I'm drawing my line. I don't know if you can see because of the color of my uh, anchor points here or the thickness of my line. But I'm trying to draw a line that describes the curve that I think the pen stroke should be taking up through here. So it's going to go. Now I also want to draw a line that describes this curve here. So I want to describe sort of the curve that's missing. All right. So this might require you to zoom in and move points around. If you're having trouble with point snapping, you might have to turn snap to pixel off. But make sure that you are indeed snapping to points. And again, I want to try to describe this curve. Usually you want these handles to be kind of halfway between here and there. So it kind of makes the tangent of that. I need one more. I need to cut this part up here. But this should give me most of the parts that I require. So now I can select this thing. Usually I end up having to duplicate it. I'm just holding down. Alt or Option to drag it down like that. And now I'm going to select all this stuff, go Shift M, and that's going to call up the Shape Builder tool. And then I'm going to build a shape. So I'm going to just drag between these two. I'm going to add those two shapes together. And then I'm going to hold down Alt, click these two shapes and make them go away. So now I've got the first part up here. And then the second part is going to be without here and yes to these two. So that's going to make my two shapes. Now I've got enough points that they can stick back on top of each other. And you'll notice they're exactly the same as the rest of the stuff. Then I like to move these to be on their own separate layers. So you end up with this part, and then this part, and then this part. So you end up with all these separate parts. Then we're just going to import those into After Effects. You just save this as an Illustrator file, import it into After Effects, and you end up with 
Something like this that I've prepared earlier. We're getting really into cooking show territory. So I have all of these layers and I've got them organized and ordered and named. If I wanted to animate this on, I would start animating from one side to the other. And really, if you want to just stagger all these layers, that's going to get you halfway to where you want to go anyway. Something that can really help you out here, here's a little tip that I learned a while back, is using a pretty garbage line to describe the motion. So just like we did at the beginning, we create this path, this mask path. We use the trim paths to animate it on. And all we're doing with this line is describing the motion. So I'm gonna make this, you know, a nice bright white so you can see what's happening. We're only using this line to describe the timing that we want. It's really only here to show us how quickly things come on, how much of a thing we want to reveal at a time. Now we can use this line by observing where it is at what parts of the animation, when do we actually need to bring on the different layers. So for example, W2 doesn't need to start until here because the line hasn't touched it yet. As soon as it touches it, that's when we can bring this layer on. Now we can move ahead and the eye, this eye stick part, really doesn't come on until uh, till right here. That's the only time when it's getting overlapped. So that's gonna happen. So then I would just go through all of this and shift all of these layers in time so they only start when the line is going to touch them. I'm just going to uh, do that now while the video speeds up. And once you're done, your layers would look kind of like this. They have this kind of a shape to them. So now you don't need to look at this layer. In fact, I've made it a guide layer. And now you can kind of see the rough timing that's gonna happen. From there, you can use various techniques to bring these parts on. If you wanna use track mats, if you wanna use masks, you can do that. I personally like the fine control of masks. If you were to use masks like I did, you would end up with something like this, which is, I think, a pretty good looking thing. One of the tricks I use to make masking these on and off a lot easier is I draw the final shape, I go around the whole thing, and then I keyframe backwards. So I start here and then I work my way backwards. It allows me to have really nice fine control over this leading edge. So I can have it be wavy if I want. I can have it be concave or convex if I want. It really gives you some nice fine control. And I like to go through and really just hit the main beats and then try to fill in the middle parts. It doesn't take as long as it looks. But overall, these techniques hopefully should help you get where you want to go a lot faster. I can't take away all of the labor. Good work always takes effort, but hopefully these can help you solve your more complex write-on problems. All right, that's it. Hopefully these techniques will help you animate on your script logos, get you through a bunch of blocks of text. It can really save you a lot of time to plan this stuff out and hopefully this gives you the tools to do that. If you've had any trouble with this tutorial, please let me know in the comments. I know there are a lot of specific edge cases that come up and there isn't always a clear straight line to get you to where you want to go. Much like there's no straight lines in script fonts. And if you want to find out more about Whipster, please use the link in the description and uh, start improving your review process today. If you've enjoyed learning about this kind of thing, you like learning about motion graphics, After Effects, please subscribe to this channel. We get new tutorials up every week, or at least I try to. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be notified when things come up. It's pretty helpful. I'm Evan Abrams. I'm on Twitter at EC Abrams. Ask me any questions, comments you'd like. Tell me what you want to see on the channel, and we'll try to make it happen. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.